everybody, Marty with Bearcat here. And today we're going to walk you through the assembly of our CH 800H steer chipper. We're going to get it from the crate ready to chip. Keep in mind this is one of two boxes and our second box is going to contain the hopper. And we'll get into that in a second here but first let's get the plastic off this. All right guys, now you can see we've got our top off. We're gonna go ahead and note that we've got some internal components that are bolted down to the pallet. You've got your chute support. And back here we've got our discharge chute. Being that we have nothing bolted to the sides of our pallet, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the sides, remove our internal components, lay them out, and then we'll get ready to set this thing on the ground. All right, a lot of our components are bolted to the pallet. We're gonna use a 9 16 Remove that leg screw. Right now at this point we got the machine ready to lift out of the crate. Um, depending on the convenience for you, you can either use a forklift or an overhead crane and we'll mount that on our, on our pick loop here. So let's go ahead and get this thing rigged up and out of here. We'll move on to our second box. This is going to contain our infeed along with our owner's kit. We're going to go ahead and open up this box, get out our owner's kit, and make sure we got all the parts we need. All right, you see we got our checklist, all of our hardware that we're going to use to assemble this machine. Your owner's kit, your owner's manual, startup kit, safety, uh, safety glasses, earplugs, our discharge pin. Remember guys, you're gonna wanna keep that with the machine. This is our anvil gauge to set the blade to anvil gap and also check the edge of your blades according to which blades you have. Last but not least, our discharge rings. We're assembling our discharge tube. Uh, just something I like to do. Open up my hardware kit. Just go ahead and get everything kind of separated, counted. Make sure we've got everything that we need. All right guys, you can see here I've kind of split our box open. I've got a strap going through the, the infeed. We're gonna go ahead and lift that out. While I've got that up, I'll go ahead and get my box out of here. All right, so we're getting ready to put on our infeed chute. 
But as you can see here, we're gonna run our carriage bolts from the inside out. And you might run into interference with this feed roller. So what we're gonna do, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jack up that feed roller using our hydraulic jack on the side. And we're gonna make sure that we get that feed roller out of the way so we have clean access to the bolt holes. And once we get this bottom hole in line with the tab here, go ahead and lock that into place. Again, that's a safety feature so that that roller can't come down as we're in there working. All right, while we're in here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove the bolt that's holding our hydraulic control valve. And we'll set that off to the side for now. Make sure we move our bolt out of there. All right, guys, we went ahead and lifted our infeed chute. That slot right there is a nice balance point. And for our convenience, we used an eyelet bolt, the nut, and a plastic washer on the back side. It's a good center of gravity to lift the infeed chute. If you don't have access to this, you can also use a forklift, maybe lift it from the side. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get ready to install our bolts, probably starting with the bottoms and then work our way up to the side bolts and get everything nice and tightened up. All right guys, you can see we've got back in, we've tightened up our side bolts on both sides. We've also left this one open here on the bottom. The reason why we left that open is because we're gonna install a P-clip there. It's gonna help control our hose routing up to the, uh, the mount of the control valve up here on our in-feed chute. Uh, just a quick tip for you guys, if you're having troubles installing this, you can remove this top cover of the feed roller housing. There's five bolts, five 9 16 bolts. You're gonna to wanna to remove those. Remove your springs on both sides. And you can actually lift this entire feed roller assembly out, set it off to the side. Be careful, watch out for your control valve. But that's gonna give you access to the back side of these bolts as well. So, a little quick tip, something a little bit easier, save you some time. And now with that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lower this down. All right, now our next step, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get ready to install our in-feed chute support. You'll notice that when this comes in the, out of the crate, there's a tag on here that denotes that this is your in-feed chute support. We're gonna use our 3 8 bolts, two washers, two nylon nuts for the base, the short end, gonna mount right here in our center hole. We've gone ahead and I've kind of loosened that for us already. I'll leave that loosely assembled right now while I come in here and I install our, our other two bolts. There you go, we've got our in-feed chute support installed. We'll go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, we're gonna get ready to mount our control valve onto our in-feed hopper. And you wanna note that I've gone ahead and raised this bar. And uh, our bar that's gonna get attached to our control valve is now facing forward. Another thing to note, that the control valve is actually bolted to the, the feed roller housing when it's shipped. So these lines have been pre-tightened and they're kind of stuck to that way. So what I'm gonna do, Go ahead and loosen the lines, just crack the lines so I've got some rotation for the hose. The bolts are gonna come in from the inside. All right, folks, so we got this just kind of quickly mounted, nice and loose. Remember, come back in and tighten your hydraulic lines. All 
also while we're here. Remember we've got that hose, we're gonna capture the routing. Throw that P-clip around it. Put that together. All right, with that started, I'll go ahead and tighten that up. Make sure our hose routing is looks fairly good. And uh, we'll tighten that up. We'll be finished up with our infeed and go ahead and we'll tighten up our, our control valve. Our next step is getting our linkage hooked up to the control valve. All right, guys, we've got our 5 16ths washer on the outside. Go ahead and insert our spacer. Three large washers. Go ahead and bring that back into our assembly. And then we've got our 516 flange nut on the back side. There we go. Alright, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here by assembling our discharge chute. And uh, step one is we're going to start install our uh, discharge ring as always small ring on the inside large ring on the outside and i'm going to install that along the back portion and then finalize it when we get it on the machine by installing the front ring again by installing that back ring we can install it and that weight of the tube is going to actually hold it in place for us a little bit note that your discharge pin i'm going to go ahead and start that now it's going to go in your center hole. Right now I'm just going to go ahead and snug these up. I don't want them super tight. We're going to still have to put some grease in these guys. Go ahead and start working on our front end here and we'll get our discharge cap put on. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, tighten up our hardware and we'll get this thing mounted. All right, guys, we've gone ahead and we've got our pre-assembly done on our discharge tube. Got my rear ring installed. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this discharge tube up onto the flange base. Once I get it up there, I'm gonna lock it into place. We'll install our, our front ring. Give this thing some grease. And the next time you see us, we're gonna be out chipping. Well, and there you have it, guys. We've just assembled the CH800H machine from the crate to full assembly. The next time you see this machine, we'll be in action out in the field doing some chipping for you guys. Stay tuned. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos on our channel to learn more about Prairie Bearcat products and get tips from the pros like me. And see our equipment in action.